my name is Marcus from Ideal Stencils. We're a small family run business based in East Yorkshire and today me and Michaela are very excited to be showing you how to use our scallop border stencil to get an amazing effect on your wall. We have a few uh, different border stencils designs that we offer. Um, this is a scallop border that we're going to be using today and this is an example of a wave border and they both work in exactly the same way where you paint a band across your wall horizontally a colour band at the bottom and then you'll use the stencils as a topper to paint through the cut out areas of the stencil to create the border design along the top. This is the stencil, you can see it's quite thin and flexible. Um, the material it's made out of is called Mylar and this is the industry standard for making home decor wall stencils. The reason why it's so thin is so that when you affix it to the wall you get a nice close contact with the surface that you are painting and also because it's flexible it can bend around corners. So if you come a bit closer and I'll stick it to the wall. So you can see that because the stencil is thin you're getting a nice close contact with the wall so when you use your roller or your brush you are very close to the wall surface ensuring a very crisp line. If the stencil was very thick, then you wouldn't get a nice clean edge to your painted result. So these are some of the materials that you're going to need for your stenciling project. You're going to need um, a spirit level and pencil for marking a horizont horizontal line across the wall. You're going to need a um, standard paintbrush and a paint roller and tray for painting your wall. Now you're going to need a stencil. This is the 80 centimeter scallop stencil. Repositional spray mount, ca spray mount can be used on the back of the stencil to make it tacky but it's not absolutely necessary. Most of the time just using low tack tape will be enough to stick your stencil into position. Um, we've got paint, we're going to use this nice pink colour for our scallop wall. Um, and then there's your more specialised tools for actual stenciling which is a proper stencil brush. This is a one inch stencil brush and a high density foam roller, which we will use when we're stenciling our border. Okay, so we've masked off around the area where we're going to be painting. And now we're gonna draw our straight line, horizontal line across the wall. So decide how high you want your band of color to be. This looks about the right level. And we've got a little spirit level and we're simply going to be making a dashed line and then once we've got our horizontal line going across the wall we'll use another piece of long masking tape just to um, mask off that band and then we'll paint the bottom half of the wall. of the wall as you can see it's still drying the darker patches is where it's still drying but along the top it's dry now so we can release our paint and we can start to think about painting our scallop border so now we're going to affix the stencil to the wall I've put masking tape but just um, low tack masking tape at just a few points around the stencil and we're going to attach it to the wall and um, we're going to put our stencil in the middle of the wall and we're going to bend it into the corner. So you can start your scallop stencil anywhere along the line you want really. We're going to start ours in the middle and we're just going to have it so you can just see a little bit of the band of colour coming up into the scallop shapes. Just like that and we're just going to fix it into position. Just going to talk to you about the two tools that you need for stenciling you want to use a proper stenciling brush which is like this with a flat head and it's got stiff pack bristles and you use it to pounce the paint through the openings of the stencil. This is a dense foam 
roller, also known as a gloss roller, um, that you can use for rolling through your stencil. You don't want to use an ordinary painting roller, what you'd use for a normal wall, or a, a normal paint brush. You need these specifically to use for stenciling, otherwise you won't get a good result. The, a little bit of paint is better to use. If you use too much paint on your brush or on your roller, you're going to get paint bleeding underneath the edges of the stencil and you're going to get blotchy edges. So a little bit of paint is what you want to use. If you're using a brush, you want to stipple in like this with a little bit of paint from the, from the plastic into the opening of the stencil. That way you're ensuring that you're going to get a crisp line. Similar, if you can, with, with a roller, roll down into the shapes rather than like this against the edge of the shape because there's always the chance that you might push paint underneath um, the plastic and also get blotchy edges. So there's that's two very good tips to how to get a nice crisp line when stenciling. Okay, so now we're going to load our stencil brush. And then what you want to do before you start painting is you want to dab the brush off onto some paper like this because you don't want to use too much paint when you're stenciling because otherwise paint can get underneath the edges of the stencil so the paintbrush wants to look like this if, um, when you start painting and then you're ready to start stenciling the wall. So I'm stenciling around the edges of the shape which is going to give us a nice crisp line and as you can see I'm slightly brushing inwards from the edges of the shape when your brush starts to feel like it's getting a bit dry, then you need to get some more paint on your brush. Make sure that you wipe it off before you start stenciling again. And then it's back to there. So if you want, you can fill in all of the shape um, with the stencil brush, which might be a bit time consuming, but that's where the roller will come in in a bit because I'll show you how to use the roller where once you've done the edges it might be a good idea to then use a dense foam roller to fill in here just to save time. So again, you're just using the stencil brush around the edges of the shapes. To make a nice crisp line and you'll see that if I, if, if I lift the stencil now in this position then you'll see that we're getting nice crisp lines around the edges of the scallops. So you can always put your stencil back into position then. You should just lay straight back down into the same position and just allow you to carry on stenciling. Just remember, just keep getting the paint on your brush when you need it and offloading your brush before you start stenciling again. So now I'm going to show you how to use the dense foam roller. We're going to fill in these shapes here with the dense foam roller and then we'll just do these two with the dense foam roller so you can see the difference. So I'm going to load the roller first with paint. And I'm just going to wipe it off onto a bit of card and then I'm going to just roll, as I said, roll from the outside inwards like this into the shape where possible. We'll do this bit here. You can always hold with, you maybe should put tape more all the way around the stencil, but you can always use your finger, hold the stencil plastic in position as you are moving around the stencil. So we filled those two in now and I'll get a bit more paint on my roller and we'll do the other two shapes with just the roller, the roller only. So you've got the paint on your roller, you've just got to remember to give it a good roll off. So if you come and look at the, at the roller, you can see now that there's no visible blobs of paint on the roller at all. It's very, it's very 
very dry almost. And so the paint will dry very, very quickly um, on the wall when you're painting with this. So you can see I'm ro rolling in from the edge of the shape where into the middle, because that is going to mean that we don't push paint underneath the stencil's edges and ensure that we get the crispest results. Of course, you're going to get a little bit of paint bleeding under the edges of the stencil, but your eye isn't going to see, see it um, when you stand back. The overall effect is going to look, is going to look brilliant. So you can see that we've filled that shape in now and I'll go on to the next shape. I'm having to press a little bit harder with my roller now because the paint is coming out of the roller, but I think I'll probably get this shape done without having to load my roller again. And you don't have to wait for the paint to dry. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the stencil off. We can see So when you're repeating your scallop, you can place it over a shape that you've already painted for a lining, or you can just line it up next to the last shape. I'm going to line it up next to the last shape because I've got this mock door frame that we've got here on this um, fake wall that we're painting, and I want it to be able to bend over. If I put it over this one, it's not quite reaching the edge. So I'm just going to position it. I can just see where it needs to go, making sure I get a bit of the pink band at the bottom. And it's just a case of taping it. Like that. Okay, so we were really happy with the results that we got with our roller. So we're going to use the roller for the rest of the project because it is a lot quicker. And so I'm going to get a bit more paint on my roller, remember to offload it onto some card and then just go to the stencil and fill in our shapes. got to the edge now and I'm going to have to use the stencil brush to get into the edge because you can't really get in there very effectively with the roller. been useful for you and it's given you some really good tips for your stenciling project we're really happy with the way that it turned out and just take your time and use the right tools for the job and I'm sure that you'll get uh, good results from your stenciling project too thank you very much and best of luck and if you need anything then check out our website where we've got lots more help um, pages on stenciling uh, thank you for watching bye for now Online reviews really help small businesses like ours, so please leave us a review for your purchase. And also, if possible, leave photographs of your finished projects because we really love to see them and it inspires and helps other people as well who are wanting to take on a project too. So thank you very much. When you receive your stencil, it will come in a tube and it will be rolled up. Um, sometimes if the, tube, if the stencil has been in the tube for a long time in transit, you'll find that when you open it, you might find the stencil is slightly curled, um, which might make the stencil not lie perfectly flat to the wall. So what you can do if that is an issue is just turn, flip the, flip the stencil over the opposite way around and then just roll it back up 
against the curl. And then just secure it with a little bit of tape again. And if you leave it overnight, then that should be enough to tease out the curl on your stencil. You might be thinking about whether you need to clean your stencil ever. Well, the answer to that is sometimes you might have to. We've used our stencil a few times on the wall behind us, but we could use this quite a few more times before we had to think about cleaning it. You only have to clean the stencil when the results you're getting are affected by the buildup of paint along the stencil's edges. And if that is the case, then they're very easy to clean. We could just clean a stencil like this, either in the sink or in a bathtub, just with a little bit of soapy, warm water and a, um, a like a washing up pad or a washing up brush. And this, the paint should, because it's water-based emulsion paint, will come off really easy. Then just dry your stencil and then you can reuse it and it's back to its original condition. But if you do want to head over to our website, there is a dedicated tutorial there on how to clean your stencil. It's all part and parcel of stenciling that there's going to be a few little errors here and there. You might get small bits of bleed underneath a stencil that you need to touch up that might catch your eye. Um, for example, here in the corner where we've gone against the door frame, you can see there's some slight um, imperfection to the edge of the scallop shape here. So if you do get anything like this in your design, then don't worry, that's fine. All you have to do is you use a, a fine um, paintbrush and you just touch up any areas that catch your eye. So don't worry if you make a few little mistakes here and there when you're stenciling and there's a little bit of paint bleed because it's not going to be 100% perfect because you're creating something that's unique and hand painted. Most of the time it's the overall effect you're going for and that is what's important.